Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the recent events in regards to uh, Family Guy doing their little skit on Harry and Meghan and the fact that they are very upset by this. Well, I'd probably say that it's probably more Meghan that's upset by this, but it's come out in the media that Meghan is very upset and she just doesn't understand why. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight as to why people like Meghan, as in narcissists, in my opinion, why they feel upset by something along these lines and why they just can't let that go. Um, I'm also going to do a little bit of a palate cleanse because as most of you know by now that it is King Charles's birthday today and it's his 75th birthday so happy birthday to King Charles and we're going to do just a little bit of a palate cleanse like I say and just give you a few little pictures of things that the royal family have been up to uh, this, this week, well last week. Um, so if you want to join me in this video then you should know what to do by now, grab your drink of choice and drop it in the comments what you are sitting back relaxing with while you watch this video today. Um, but if you want to add a little something, something to that drink of choice, because as you know, the flag says behind me, yep, you got it. It is five o'clock somewhere. So grab your drink and let's dive right in. I'm going for a little bit of sparkle in my hair today. I just felt in the mood for some sparkle. I was at my parents over the weekend and my mum, who's a bit like me, well, she's very much like me, we get start to get very excited about Christmas. Um, and I know it's November. I appreciate the fact that many of you are going to be like, no, it's November, stop it. But I'm sorry, I just can't. And so I'm starting to feel a little bit of the excitement as I'm starting to see Christmas things in the shops. And so I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle in my hair, but also because uh, next week I'm on holiday. So for those of you who will miss me while I'm away, um, I will be doing a video before I go because I go on the Wednesday. But I'm going to Glastonbury, as most of you know, that follow me that I go to Glastonbury twice a year uh, with some good friends of mine. And I we love it there. And it is it's like my spiritual home um and I always get some glitter put in my hair and I come back like a glitter fairy um so yeah so I'm just getting I'm getting in preparation uh for that right so Harry and Meghan so I'm sure that most of you've seen in the media by now because let's face it we couldn't possibly go a week without without having some kind of drama from Harry and Meghan whether it that they have actually said this or whether the media just uh, are almost as if they even they need to find something to put in because you know there's obviously not enough things that are going on in the world to cover we've got to cover the fact that apparently Harry and Meghan are very miffed um upset disgusted um by the family guy skit that they did and for those of you who haven't seen it I'm going to try and put it up here um I might get copy written for it to get a copyright strike so if it doesn't appear you know it's because I wasn't able to put it up and I've had to take it out but I am going to try and put it up here um but for those of you if it does come up as a copyright strike I but anyway your millions from Netflix for no one knows what put it with the rest of them Babe, time to do our daily $250,000 sponsored Instagram post for Del Taco. I shouldn't have left the made-up nonsense. So if you've managed to watch it, you will understand. If you haven't, then I suggest it's everywhere online, so go and find it. It's literally 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Um, but that was enough for apparently um harry and megan and i'm probably going to say mainly megan um to be deeply upset by this now we've already had as you know the south park one which was a lot longer and i actually think a lot more brutal deservedly so um but they are apparently fed up of being depicted as spoiled brats or people that just don't really do anything and if you listen to the clip, there is actually right at the end, Harry does a little dig at the royal family where he says, oh, you know, I should have stayed with that made up nonsense or whatever it was. But you don't 
you don't see the royal family coming out and getting all upset and crying about the fact that Harry, you know, South, you know, South Park, that that uh, Family Guy have made a dig at the royal family. Um, because I'm. <laughs> so here's the thing with narcissists and I'm sure most of you because if you've been following my videos I talk so much about this in the hope that it creates that awareness and narcissism is banded around an awful lot at the moment and I do think we have to be very careful because I see it a lot in the comment well not a lot but I see it in the comments where people are saying oh I think so and so is a narcissist and I think this person's a narcissist we have to be very careful because it does take away from, in my opinion, the people who really are. Now, for those of you who don't know, you can have narcissistic traits. That does not mean that you have narcissistic personality disorder. There is there is a difference. Now, when you have narcissistic traits, um, for those of you who don't know, they can actually be worked on because the level of narcissism is very different in comparison to someone with narcissistic personality disorder. Um, with a narcissistic trait, it means that they might have one or two of the traits, um, but they have a lot of other really good qualities around them in their personality, but they've just got certain things. And a lot of celebrities can have narcissistic traits. It does not mean that they have narcissistic personality disorder. And one of the ways that you can, I suppose if you're going to break it down into layman's terms, one of the biggest things is with a with a, with someone with a narcissistic personality disorder is I, th I believe there is around five if they have a it's a collective so if they have five um attributes qualities in regards to narcissism the chances are they will then have narcissistic personality disorder so i've had many people in the comments that discuss things around narcissism and i think um like i've just said it's really important that we try to understand that there is a difference between um, someone that has narcissistic uh, personality disorder, which is classed as a cluster B disorder, um, to someone that has narcissistic tendencies. If we're looking at the two uh, two people, so Harry, I think Harry, um, I would say that Harry probably isn't as upset as Meghan would be, because um, people have said to me, you know, do I think that Harry has narcissism? Um, I've said before that I think Harry has what I would call histrionic disorder. There is a very much a link um, under the umbrella of narcissism. Histrionic personality disorder has traits of that are very similar and can bleed into narcissism. However, we have seen Harry have, when he's away from, I would say, Meghan or even before Meghan, I'm not saying that Harry is not a spoiled brat. I'm not saying that he has not got personality traits that are uh, indicative of uh, Oedipus complex, um, arrested development. I definitely think there is that, there's there's an element of that there. Um, and I think a lot of that is down to the, obviously the trauma and, you know, whether or not we, you know, it, he did he did suffer a trauma at a young age but also the drug taking if that was happening at a very early age it's almost like your your emotional maturity kind of stops and so his if you look at the way he behaves it is very much uh like a child it's very childlike so i think that i believe that i do feel that harry has histrionic disorder um, and we've seen that he can have compassion for things. Now, it seems to have got lost along the way in regards to um, the, the things that Meghan has, has kind of adopted. Um, but you've only got to look at, in a way, Harry's behaviour, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it. Um, it's very childlike. This is, it's very, uh, it matches almost someone that acts out like a child when they've been hurt. You know, like their parents have done something that they don't like. You know, you act out in rage or you act out um, with behaviour. And that's in a way what Harry is doing. Um, albeit that he's doing it as an adult and it's not as cute when it's a child. Um, if you deem it as cute. So I that that is what I think. So I would say that he probably has the ability to laugh things off, to find humour in things. 
what you'll probably find it's almost a very similar to like if you ever saw the clip with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett when the situation happened with Chris Rock when he uh, was joking about Jada and Will Smith was laughing at um, the joke until he saw Jada's face and then it was like oh, okay we're not she's not finding this funny okay I need to react and act like the man um, and so he did what he did and obviously there's more to it than that and I will be covering that on my uh, coffee and celebrities channel and I think that it's a very similar thing to um to Harry and Meghan it's almost like Meghan becomes upset by something and then it's kind of like you need to say something you need to do something about this and so then Harry then gets involved and does something because of the stress that is caused if he doesn't and we see a lot of this in narcissistic abuse. Um, the narcissist will abuse the partner and get them to do their dirty work for them, in a sense, um, because fundamentally they're cowards and they won't they won't do it themselves. So the fact that Harry's been included in this, I would definitely say it's more so the fact that it's Meghan that is upset by this, because the reason being is that her image, a narcissist's image. Is everything that's why when you are around narcissists they want to have the best of everything and their partner is an extension of that so if anyone's ever dated a narcissist in the beginning they will almost act as if they it's like they will want to dress you they will want to they will buy you things and it will seem as if they're doing it because they love you and they want all these lovely things and they want to do this for you but it's not it's an extension of who they are so if you dress a certain way um they will slowly change that because they will want you to dress how they view you should be dressing because they want you to look your best but so they and, and I'll give you an example. When I dated my narcissist, um, he uh, when I was with him, he wanted me to we were doing this kind of thing and we were going through some of my clothes and he was like, oh, what's a really great idea is I want you to put on a fashion show and I'd love to see you kind of dressed up in like some of your dresses. It's like I'd like to see them. And it was kind of starting out like quite a cute thing. But what I noticed is when I would put on my clothes he would go mm, I don't really feel that that's that does the best for your figure that's not that flattering and in the beginning of it if it was clothes that I was kind of like yeah I'm not really that fast I would kind of agree with him and I'd be like yeah you know what actually you know you're probably right and I'd be like right that goes in the discard pile but then we started to get to clothing that I really liked clothing that I um you know, we've always got, you know, we've got those items that, you know, or boots or shoes or whatever that we're like, you know what, these are really comfortable. I don't want to get rid of them or really like them. And he, and he would start doing the same thing. And the problem became apparent when I was like, yeah, but I really like this. And he's like, well, I'm, I'm just doing it because I love you. I'm just, I'm, you know, I want what's best for you. And I'd be like, well, yeah, that's great. But actually I like it and I don't want to put that in the discard pile and it, and it would almost become in this argument and obviously when I look back now and I think it's crazy to think that I was arguing with somebody about clothing um at the end of the day it's my clothing if I want to wear it I'll wear it I don't care whether you like it or not but it was a very early on relationship and I think you know I was still in that throes of I you know I kind of wanted to impress him and that but I was still I had my own identity so I was still capable of arguing and so we were having this argument and and in the end he just kind of threw in the um, well, if you don't want, want what's best for you, then I'm not going to bother either, which is like the emotional blackmail. You know, I'm just trying to do what's best for you. And if you don't see that, and it's because I love you, then there's nothing really I can do about that. And let's not do this anymore. And then he would just go quiet and go silent. Now, I'm quite a stubborn person. So for me, I don't really care about things like that. And at the end of the day, if you're going to go quiet, you go quiet. I'm not going to change my mind. But that then becomes a problem. And that's why, thankfully, the relationship did not last that long because he couldn't he couldn't wear me down. I mean, lots of other things happened, but fundamentally, that that is what they do. They try and wear you down, but they start off coming in with this. I'm doing it because I love you. I want what's best for you. So they start to manipulate and change you. And I think that there will be definitely an element of this going on with regards to Meghan and Harry. And so I think that Harry, like I've said, I do believe that he obviously comes from a lot of trauma. But Meghan, I do believe, is an absolute narcissist. Now, people have also said, do I think that she's a sociopath or a psychopath? 
Now, in layman's terms, like a lot of people believe that psychopaths are born and sociopaths are made. But I think there's a lot of bleeding into, um, you know, you've got narcissism, sociopaths and psychopaths. And there is a lot of bleeding into um, the three of them. They have very, very similar traits in the sort of like the core of who they are. But what I sort of see when I've studied it and looked into it is that sociopaths are very, can be very reactionary. They're very vengeful, whereas psychopaths in the most of the time, I think either come in sort of from like the covert narcissism aspect. Um, so it's almost like extra uh, narcissists who are quite extrovert, malignant. Um, I think that, they, you know, they're quite sort of all about me. It's all about me. My image, my everything. Um, you don't matter. Um, and they will do whatever it takes to get to their end goal. Whereas sociopaths are about if you've wronged them, I think, you know, if you've if there's something, you know, in, in instinctive in that moment, like you've done something to annoy me. And, and I call that like narc revenge. But it's a similar thing. Whereas psychopaths are methodical, in my opinion. Psychopaths are very and I'm sure there, there might be the odd the few that are not, but they plan. They they have. um they bide their time, you know, they're sort of very sort of, they're a lot calmer, which is why in the in most cases, psychopaths can actually hold down a job, they can hold down a relationship, um, they can do those things, and you, you never know, if you look at some of the more extreme cases of um, when you've got the Chris Watts case and things like that, people that, you know, I, I feel that he was possibly a covert narcissist, and then he developed into obviously a family annihilator. Um, and I think that Megan has, in a way, she's got traits of all of them. But I definitely think that she's more psychopath than sociopath because I think that she she bides her time. It's like she decides if you've wronged her, um, and they're probably the time when she's she uh she'll probably lose her temper when she gets angry about something and that's when she'll be spiteful and and she'll say things and do things and she won't care but for the most part i think she bides her time and so so for example hollywood has rejected her so hollywood is going to be in her sights she's going to do things that is going to go against hollywood and i think that part of that plan was say marrying into the royal family where she figured that that was going to open doors for her and it didn't um, and that was going to be an fu to the, to Hollywood. It's kind of like you know now I'm a, I'm you know I'm a, I'm a Duchess now, and I you know all these doors are going to be open for me, and you know there's nothing you can really do about that. And I think she genuinely thought that that she was going to be almost above Hollywood. It was going to be like you know Duchess, um, you know in her and this is in her mind not saying this is how I or anyone else sees this but I think in her mind because you've got to remember this is how she thinks as a narcissist she's up here and Hollywood would be down here and they had to bow to her curtsy to her and that would be her F you to Hollywood that hasn't panned out and the reason why I think it's panned out is for two reasons firstly when they left for Canada um in the January March we had the worldwide bug and everything went into lockdown and they obviously didn't plan on this they didn't know about it so her what their plan whatever they had going on just went out the window and this would have enraged her because it was not going to go to the way she wanted it to go so she would have been there with Harry that that sort of plotting things that they can do in and, and what while the rest of the world was trying to get to grips with it all, trying to struggle, getting through things and people were struggling and suffering and, you know, people were losing their jobs and, you know, there was all these things. They couldn't see family members. Family members were passing away and they couldn't go and visit them. And these two were just kind of like, yeah, but we'll, we'll just we'll just pop in and visit a school. We'll just do this and do that. And people were kind of like, how tone deaf are you? And so people started to see that this was not about, oh, we're so fed up with, with the way the press are and we just want our privacy. And we want to raise our alleged child um, in privacy and give them a normal life, etc. Um, they started to realise that actually it was never about that. And so the hypocrisy that the UK has started to see was starting to filter into the United States. And it's kind of led from that.
And the, but this would have, so every time a negative article came out about them, Megan would have been there planning to do something to override that. It's like, well, that's been negative. Well, let's do something to override that. So we have a positive piece put in. And in her mind, it's kind of every time I do that, people are going to see who I am. People are going to see that I'm this most amazing, wonderful person that just cares about the world. Um, but that's not what people were seeing, because in her mind, that's what she thinks. And she cannot understand. And this is the way a narcissist will think. They cannot understand why people are against them. They just don't get it. They don't see what we all see. They have these blinkers on and these almost like a filter in front of their face, which kind of gives them a version and a view of themselves that isn't factually true. And so I think that so she's there plotting and planning. And that's why I believe she uses Omid Scobie to get out those things that she now knows that she can't do. So she can't attack anybody. So she's feeding information to Omid Scobie to do that. And in, uh, in her mind, when Omid Scobie did his first book, she thought that was going to change the narrative. She probably believed that people were going to read that book and go, oh my goodness, they have just been through the worst time. The royal family are just absolutely awful. But again, it didn't work. And so each time she's planned something to change the narrative, to change the perception of the two of them, because she must be successful. And for a narcissist, it means being at the top. The top, whatever, whatever it is, they have to be at the top. They don't want to work for it. They just want to be there. And they will do and climb and, and do whatever it takes to get there. And they don't care. They don't care. And that's why I think that she is more on the lines of a psychopath because she doesn't care who she hurts. If this is a woman that can hurt her own father who literally gave up everything and did everything for her, it is not a far stretch to think that she's going to not care about people like you and I, the, 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 the public. She doesn't care about the causes that she puts her name to. All she does is she sees that as an opportunity to get the narrative to change. If I jump into Invictus, people will think, oh, I care about veterans. If I turn up to something, oh, they think I care. But the problem you have is that that two minutes that she's at something or she shows her face somewhere, it doesn't erase all the other things that she's done and it will frustrate her. And this is why I think that she's done the podcast. The podcasts were never about, I just want to give voice to the women who have been called divas and um, horrible names. It was never about that. It was about having people on that she could lord it above and go, look at me, I'm a duchess and I'm having you on my podcast and you, you know, you're, you know, how grateful should you be? But it was also about, if you look at the fact that when she came, when it come out, that she um, only interviewed certain people, she only inter interviewed people that could get her somewhere higher up. Like she wanted Taylor Swift. She knows that Taylor Swift is, is, I mean, is she a billionaire by now? If she's not, she probably isn't far off, but she's got a lot of influence in the industry. People, uh, whether you like Taylor Swift's music or what, you know, people, she's got a lot of respect in the industry. Mariah Carey, another person. Uh, Andy Cohen, another person. But Andy Cohen was also somebody that um, turned her down, I believe, turned her down when she wanted to, a stint on one of his shows. He turned her down. So there is nothing that's reactionary within those things. She plans. She knew exactly who she wanted on. She knew exactly what she was doing. And the, but the reason it wasn't successful is because she cannot help but talk about herself and she cannot help but throw people under the bus or have digs at people. Uh, she's condescending. And of course, people that watch this are going to see that and hear that. And that's what they did hear. They didn't hear anything sincere within her that she actually genuinely cared about anybody. And so I think that then she's... Um, you know, and then the Oprah interview again, you know, this was their plan to get everyone to see them as a victim, believe what they were saying. And in the beginning, people did, it's mainly in America, they did see that. But when people started to debunk the lies, 
kind of go, hang on a minute, that's not true, or that doesn't make sense because you said that that racism incident with, with uh, your child was when you were pregnant, but then when Harry comes on, he says, oh, it happened when we first got together and Meghan wasn't even pregnant then. So so which one is it? Which one, which one is it? What I think happened is that there was this jokey comment made. I think Harry was probably in, in that joke and probably found it really funny relayed that to Megan and Megan went well I don't find that funny I feel that's that's racist it was nothing to do with anything to do with this uh, her alleged pregnancy and Archie and any of that I think it was a way for her to go oh I'm going to use that and Harry probably didn't even know that she was going to bring that up in the interview with Oprah there were, you know it's not a coincidence that she went on first and then Harry then went on you know again like she's the royal and Harry's just like the spare to her which is what he's become so everything that she's done has been a methodical plan the things that she's done against the royal family have been revenge it's been because you said no you did not give me what i wanted but not only that because hollywood hollywood didn't pan out in her eyes it's now it's well i'm blaming you so she when they divorce, she will blame Harry. She will blame Harry's family. For everything that's going wrong in her life, she will be blaming them. And this is what narcissists do. They cannot understand why people are not seeing how amazing they are. She just can't see it. And so that's why I feel that she is more in the realm of psychopath because she is behind the scenes scheming plotting i would imagine that her brain never switches off as soon as she gets uh she puts out one thing that doesn't work right what can we do next you know this is why she's constantly changing her image constantly doing something and like i said in the last video she is a social climber so she does anything that gets her into the the doors that she needs opening but the the problem is it's not working because people just do not take her seriously and this will be frustrating her and that is when she could then develop going into being a sociopath because she could then get very very angry with the fact that this is not working out for her so even though she's got this calm concise I would imagine planning, plotting, scheming, manipulating to get where she needs to be. When it doesn't go to plan, she's angry and she will take it out on people. So she will be taking it out on staff. If she had children, which I don't believe she does, if she had children living with her, she would be taking it out on the children. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that over the, in the next bit. So here is my little palette cleanse where I'm going to show you just a few clips of King Charles's 75th birthday and also the wonderful statues. I don't know if you've seen them, but the wonderful statues that have just been um, shown where we've got um, Prince Philip and the late Queen Elizabeth outside the Royal Albert Hall. And what I love is that you, it, you've got uh, Prince Philip that is looking at... Lilibet and I think that that is what is so wonderful it's like he's looking at her and I love that and it's just such a romantic notion and I love it and then we've also got the fact that the Queen Elizabeth statue has been uh, in York I believe has been um, unveiled so I'm going to show a few clips of that and then also a few clips of uh, the Prince and Princess of Wales in the Bahamas um, snorkeling which is just wonderful because they're the person who won the Earthshot prize to do with the, the the coral reef and growing new coral which i think is fantastic it's so important um so i'm going to do a little bit of that and i'm going to go back to the next part of the video
everyone has dogs. <laughs> we need to give you doggy bags. And of course, Armistice Day. Yep. So, three, two, one. Here it goes. So I think that you can all agree that was just such, it was just such a lovely thing. And I, I love the fact that the royals are just carrying on. They really are. No matter what Harry and Meghan are doing or attempting to do, it, it really doesn't bear any, uh, just it doesn't affect them at all, you know, on the surface. I'm sure it does personally. Um, how can it not? You know, especially given Meghan are not anything to do with uh, King Charles's birthday and I'm sure that that is upsetting for any member of our family um, when you've had a falling out with somebody that you love in your family and they've turned against you or they've done something and then they're not there at significant moments it is hurtful it is sad and you do feel that on the surface you kind of might not show it but underneath it's it's devastating um it doesn't change that fact, even for the, you know, for most of us who kind of go, well, you know, well, Harry deserves to stay away. He shouldn't have anything to do with the king and, and the family. But it's, this is still a family. We have to remember that regardless of what Harry's done and how hurt and angry the family must feel, it's still going to hit where it hurts in the heart. And it's still going to create that sadness of it didn't need to be this way. Um, so I think we do have to try and remember that they're human beings and this still will be affecting them, even if they do feel that the decision of keeping him away is the right decision. Um, and so like going on to like what I've said about the children, if the children did live with them, ha Meghan most definitely, and I don't believe Harry, I actually do feel even though Harry is incredibly immature and certainly needs to go and speak to somebody to work out a lot of his issues, um, I do actually feel that if he was with the right woman, a loving, nurturing woman, um, he actually could be a very good father if, he's, if he worked on himself. Megan will never be a good parent because, like I say, I do believe that she is a psychopath and I do believe that she has sociopathic tendencies and I do believe she has narcissistic personality disorder. So if the children did live with them, which thankfully, in my opinion, I believe they don't, um, she would be taking out a lot of her rage on the children and she would, but she would be pushing, she would be pushing Lily to be front and centre. Now, a few people have said to me, but that's not the case because... Um, Megan's a narcissist and it's all about her but what you've got to remember is when a narcissist has young children they are an extension of themselves so usually especially if there's more than one you will have one or two that they take it out on and they are bullying to but you'll have the other one who they will put on a pedestal they will be almost like a mini them so she will be uh, if, if Lily live with them then she would be uh, almost grooming Lily to be uh, 
a, a mirror image of her. So, so whenever Lily goes out, Lily would be dressed in the most immaculate things. She would have the most expensive things. She would be an extension of Megan. And Megan would use Lily for attention. Look how much of a great mother she is. You know, she would get all the attention of being a, such a super wonderful mother. But what she would also do is use Lily to upstage Charlotte. Megan, in my opinion, hates Charlotte, in my opinion, I believe. And I think that's an awful thing to say, given that Charlotte is a child. But I do believe that she does. And the reason being is that she, um, I think she hates Catherine because Catherine is... Uh, genuine. She's everything that Megan isn't. She's also Princess of Wales, which would have infuriated Megan having that title. She's also being now being given the, the, the title of the Princess of the People, again, which would anger Megan. And Charlotte is such a delightful, beautiful young girl, and she's, you know, you know, a mirror image of her mother. And so by extension, Megan would would hate her because of that, and also because she is an actual princess. So she would use uh, Lily to upstage Charlotte. So if there was ever any pictures of Charlotte, we would see a picture of Lily. She would suddenly go out and about with Lily. Oh, look, Megan is out with Lily. Um, she would be using that because, again, she would still be getting attention, but Lily would be an extension of Megan. So Megan would be upstaging uh, Catherine and she would use Lily to upstage Charlotte. And that is how she would play this. Archie would also be used to upstage the other royals. But to be honest, in Meghan's eyes, this is more about Charlotte and, and Catherine. Um, so when people talk about the jealousy aspect, this would be if Lily started to get more attention than Meghan. And a lot of the time as the child ages um, and she's say, a beautiful young child um, and people focused more on Lily than they did Megan. That is when it will. That is when it will change. All the time that Megan gets the same level of attention as Lily because she's Lily's mother, um, and because she is an extension of Megan, she's she'll be fine. As soon as Lily eclipses her in the attention, that is when the problem will arise, and, and that this could happen when the child develops their own sense of autonomy. Um, when they start to talk and think for themselves and they're cute and funny, then they start to grow up and say she, she wanted to say, you know, especially if Lily decided she wanted to be an actress. Oh, oh, oh that would that would be terrible. That would be terrible um, because Megan wasn't successful. So to have Lily as successful. Yeah, she would not like that at all. She, you'd start to notice that she, you know, probably behind closed doors. In the public, she would be praising Lily. Um, behind closed doors, she would start to put her down and make her feel worthless. Um, her confidence would be knocked. Um, and I'm, any of you that have had a parent that's a narcissist, you will know that this is how it happens, unfortunately. Um, and it is sad that it would happen that way, but it would happen that way. And that's why... I have said that I do not believe the children are with them because they are not being used by Harry and Meghan. And these are not normal parents. I'm not, not, not necessarily meaning Harry here because I don't think Harry actually would do that. But Meghan would. And I think that um, the fact that we're not seeing that. And there's been plenty of opportunities. And, and I know people have said, well, they think that Archie might have some... Um, like there's something, um, I don't want to use the term wrong, something wrong with Archie because I really dislike that. But there's something about Archie that, in, say, in Megan's eyes that she doesn't like. Um, personally, again, I don't I don't believe that. I will, I'm going to stand by the fact that I think that Archie is here in the UK. And the reason Megan doesn't have anything to do with him is A, because she's not his mother and she will not want to parent another person's child, but also because... Well, he's here in the UK, um, and so that's why they're, they're not there. And if you go and watch my other videos where I've said about the other children, um, the other children, um, the other child, albeit that she's supposed to have had another child with somebody else. Um, also, people have said to me about that apparently Thomas has said that she had a hysterectomy. I cannot find 
any evidence of this. So if anyone knows of this particular video where he did an interview where he said this or Samantha said this, please send it to me in my email address because it's very difficult for me to say because I get a lot of the comments saying, yes, but she's had a hysterectomy. Um, we don't know that. I have not, I can't say yes or no because I haven't seen the video footage of this supposed interview where one of them said that this happened. Um, so if you have that, please let me know. Please let me know. So yeah, so let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I hope you like my bit of sparkle in the hair today. Um, getting in the in the festive mood um so next week um i will be doing obviously another video this week i am really trying to get my second video on my celebrity coffee and celebrity channel my marilyn monroe one <laughs> i've got to stop deep diving into research because the, the more i go into one area it opens up doors in other areas and i'm before i know it, i've got so much research that I'm like actually making my head explode and I need to stop because I've got to do this video and get this done. I want to get that done this week. Um, so yeah, please bear with me. I'm so sorry for the people that are like, uh, when is your second video going to drop? It's coming. I promise you. I just need to stop going down rabbit holes. I need to just stop digging. <laughs> um, so I will be doing another video on this channel, hopefully a video on that channel. Um, but next week I'll be a little bit more quiet because um, I can't remember if I said this in the beginning. I've forgotten whether I've said this or not. Ah. Um, I will be going, I'm going on holiday for a week. So I will be offline. Um, I'm, I'm so looking forward to this. I feel like I need this break. So I probably will do a video before I go. Um, but there will be a week. So for any of you that, that feel the need to email me going, where are you? Are you okay? I love the fact that you care. But just so you know, I am going away with some friends. And so I will be quiet. Um, but when I'm back, normal CB will be resumed and I will be doing my Christmas giveaway. So I'll be letting you know what that will be um, when I come back. Um, exciting. Um, so yeah, so in the meantime, have a wonderful rest of the day, whatever you are doing. And I don't forget to give this a like and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss future uploads. And also because it helps the algorithm. Don't forget to drop a comment because that also helps. If you'd like to treat me to a cuppa because you've got something from this video, then please do. It is not obligatory, but it's lovely if you do. Um, and the, that is in the description box below. And you can also see it just above the subscribe button. You can join up as a member. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Rumble. Um, I'm over there. Um, you can uh, send me something. I do have a PO box for people that want to write to me. Um, I get lots of letters and it's really lovely opening those. Um, but if you want to send me something or send Arthur, Arthur something, you can. The PO box is in the description box below. Um, what else? Uh, subscribe to my other channels, which is Tea and Therapy, Coffee and Celebrities, my son's channel. The link is there also. Um, and yeah, I think, I feel like I've forgotten something and I'm sorry that if you've asked me to say something and my brain has just gone and I've forgotten. I feel like there's something else I should have said and I've forgotten. Um, yeah, thank you for all the positive comments in regards to the shampoo and conditioner. Uh, I had lots of comments and emails from people saying that they are going to get this. So thank you so much. It's really kind of you and I really do appreciate that. Um, as you know, I do get people that come to me and ask me to promote things. And if I like it, I agree with it. I will do so because it helps them and I like to help people. But also I like to give back to you guys and get you that little bit of a percentage off um, so you can save a few pennies because we know how important that is. Um, so, yeah. So in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. And as always, I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.